Welcome back everybody to part four of the volatility lingo series and quite possibly one of the most important concepts for systematic traders to understand. Honestly, one of the biggest mistakes I see traders make is when they try to use nominal values as input variables for their trading systems, when in reality, all we should care about is relative values. The actual nominal number of a volatility metric means very little. What we should care about is where that value is in relation to its own history or in relation to a certain time period. That's when you'll get the most meaningful information, and that's what percentiles help us actually do. And really quick, if you want to go far beyond these basic terms and actually see my live trades and follow my real portfolio, there's a no obligation free trial on my website you can claim anytime. You'll see firsthand if VTS is right for your long-term investing goals. So there's two common ways of representing relative values. And just to keep these videos more short and to the point, I'm gonna do percentiles today, and then in the next video, we'll talk about percentile ranking. So for the first variation, percentiles help us express where an observation falls within a larger data set. More specifically, the percentile tells us what percentage of observations were equal or below that value within a data set. So just as a basic example here, let's say that a student scored 80% on an exam. Yeah. Well, is that good? When we first hear that grade, we would be tempted to say, yeah, 80% is a pretty good score. But then what if we find out that actually 80% of the students that took that very same exam scored higher than 80%? Only 20% of the students actually scored 80% or below. Well, now it doesn't sound that good anymore, does it? A score of 80% is only the 20th percentile, meaning that student only beat 20% of the students in the class. Knowing the percentile ranking gives us far more information about the actual context of something. Here's another example more specific to volatility traders. This is a chart of the VIX index for the last one year, and last Friday the VIX closed at a price of 1641. That seems really low, right? There's only been a few days on here that were lower and only temporarily. Again, on first glance, we might be tempted to say a VIX of 1641 is very low. Maybe some people out there are tempted to actually go out and buy some VXX or UVXY in anticipation of volatility perhaps going higher again. Side note, please think twice before actually doing that. I've got over a dozen videos on my channel now talking about the dangers of trying to play the volatility contrarian with ETPs that decay long term. It rarely works out for people. But anyway, this here is the actual percentile distribution of the VIX index going back to 1986. For those few years before 1990, I'm using the old VXO calculation and the S&P 100, just to drag it back a few years further. This allows us to include Black Monday just for fun. You can see the alarmingly high level of 150 on October 19th, 1987. Wouldn't that have been a fun day for traders? But here I'm showing all the VIX index values broken down into 10% increments so we can get a much better idea of the distribution. Now, the current VIX at 1641 is basically right there, around the 40th percentile. Remember, that 40th percentile means that 40% of all values in the distribution were at or below 40%. So we are currently below that middle point. That 50th percentile is 1814. But honestly, right now, being in the 40th percentile, that's not considered very low for the VIX. In fact, I'd be much more tempted to say it's about average right now and could just as easily go lower as reversing higher basically a coin flip at this point. That's the context that percentiles give us. Knowing the VIX is 1641 isn't that useful. That's just a nominal value. But knowing it's in the 40th percentile provides the proper historical context. So I know you can probably Google this pretty easily, but just in case you do have a data set and you want to calculate the percentiles, I'll show you how to do that really simply in Excel. All right, so I'm very far from an Excel expert here. I know just enough to get my own work done. But if you have a basic data set and you just want to do some percentiles, I can show you how to do that really quickly. So we've got the VXO and the VIX values here. So from 1986 all the way down to 2021. But just as a quick example today, I'm going to do percentiles for just the first 30 days. And the Excel function is very simple. You just do equal percentile. And then you can just drag down from the first day to the 30th day. And then after this comma, we're just going to input the percentile that we're looking for. So let's do 0 0.2. You can see it's 1735. This value means that 20% of those values in the first 30 days were equal or below 1735. So if we wanted to know the 50th percentile, we can just do the same thing again from 1 to 30. And this time, type 0 0.5. 
Essentially, that's the midpoint, the median. Can do it again. Percentile from zero to 30, and now let's do 0.8. This is the 80th percentile. 80% of values were equal or below 2021. And then just to round out the distribution, we can do 100% and zero as well using the same function. So percentile from one to 30, and you can just type in one. The highest value in those 30 days was 2212. And then the lowest value, percentile, same thing, we can go to 30 and just do zero. So in this very short 30-day distribution, the values go from 1666 to 2212, and we can get any percentile in the middle. This is why percentiles are valuable. Now we can start adding context to certain values. And that's how I did this basic distribution, going back the entire 35 years, and then dividing it into deciles. But if a person wanted, they could do the same thing for just a smaller portion of the data set. Maybe you just want to know the percentile values from, say, the financial crisis in 2008 up until current times. Well, when you're including your values, you would only include that 12-year period. I would say at least 80% of the time when I'm viewing my volatility metrics and all of my data sets, I'm doing it through percentiles to get better context. So I would definitely encourage all you traders out there to start viewing your data set in percentile terms rather than just absolute levels. Like we showed, a VIX of 16, or maybe 30 for example, is really not very useful information and doesn't give us much historical context. But knowing that VIX at 16 is actually the 40th percentile, or a VIX of 30 is in the 90th percentile, well now it gives the proper context to where those values actually are. So as always, if you like my work and you want to see more, you can claim your free trial on my website and see what the VTS community is all about. You're always welcome to join us. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching the video. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and go check out my website right here. There's tons of articles and videos on there, as well as a free trial to join the VTS investing community. What have you got to lose? Come see how I personally navigate these unruly markets. See you next time.